That's it. All right, so here we're up to the subtraction problem. I'm going to rewrite it. So we are 61 degrees and 15 minutes, and we're going to subtract from that 40 degrees and 26 minutes. Now, something should be standing out to you, some red flag. What red flag should be standing out? Um, oh, I'm sad. What's your name? Eloisa. Eloisa. Um, you can't subtract 25 minutes. You got it. We cannot take 26 away from 15. 26 is bigger than 15, so we can't take that away. So what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to borrow, but now I'm changing our units. So like this is minutes, now I have to borrow from degrees, which is fine, I can borrow. So instead of 61, it becomes 60 degrees, but now I'm going to add to the minutes. I'm not adding one minute, I'm adding one degree. And one degree is how many minutes? 60. 60, so in reality, we are adding 60 to that 15. So now we're at 60 degrees, 75 minutes, and from that we're going to subtract 40 degrees and 26 minutes. All right, borrowing from within the same units is fine, so this becomes a 6, this becomes a 15. 15 minus 6 is 9, 6 minus 2 is 4, 60 minus 40 is 20. And that is our difference, 20 degrees and 49 minutes. Yes? Oh, that represents minutes. That's the markings. You know how the circle is degrees? That represents minutes. All right, so now we're going to talk about congruent angles and segments. This word or this concept of congruency, you are going to hear probably every single class from now until June. Hey, right, what does it mean to be congruent? Well, to be congruent really just means to be the same. If two segments are congruent, they have the same length. If two angles are congruent, they have the same measure. If two figures or shapes are congruent, that means they are the same size and the same shape. So it really means to be the same. So congruent segments are segments that have the same length. The symbol for congruent is an equal sign with a squiggly over it. So from this point on, we are going to most of the time be using the symbol congruent to show things are the same. So we're not going to say equal. We'll probably say congruent most of the time. Wait, but then what's, then what's the difference between equal and congruent? So um, we will still use equal. Like if an angle is equal to 50 degrees, we're going to say so that angle equals 50. The measure of that angle equals 50. We'll use the equal symbol for that. Um, but if I were to say two angles have the same measure, I would say like angle A congruent angle B. Oh. So it's basically saying two things are the same versus saying something is equal to something else oh. or equal to some number. All right, the way we show congruency is we put similar markings. So I just want to focus in on the two triangles right now. On these two triangles, do you see how angle K has a loop with a slash and angle T has a loop with a slash? Because they have identical markings, that shows us that those two angles are congruent. Those two angles are congruent. So the way we write that is angle K congruent angle T. We read angle K is congruent to angle T. Looking at the two triangles, is there two segments that have the same mark on them? Does anybody see? Looking for somebody different. Two segments that have the same mark just on the triangles. Julia, you got this. Um, G and H 
You got it. GH has one slash, SR has one slash. Because they have the same number of slashes on them, that means those segments are congruent. So the way we're going to write that is segment GH is congruent to segment RS or SR. It doesn't matter. No other segments or angles are congruent in the triangles. KG has three slashes. Nothing here has three slashes. Um, angle G has two loops. Nothing here has two loops. Um, RT has like a circle mark. Nothing has a circle mark. So there's nothing else congruent. Now let's go to the trapezoid looking thing. Can anybody tell me what's congruent in the shape that looks like a trapezoid? Jerry, give me one thing. Segment ZW is congruent to segment YX. Excellent. Sam. Um, angle W and angle X. You got it. Angle W is congruent to angle X. Libby, you okay? Uh, no. You look a little confused. What's wrong? No, I was just trying to see. Do you want to move closer? It's okay. You're sure? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I just have a question. So if the, so like the highlighted lines I have there, doesn't matter the length? No, the length. it doesn't matter the length. As long as it's just like one slash and not two slashes versus one slash. More yeah, I can grab you more tissues. the following diagram. Just as important as it is to be able to read the congruent markings, you also need to be able to mark diagrams yourself. Because the most important thing that we do, for, or the first important thing that we do in every problem, is go through the given information and mark the information on our diagrams. So my, for some reason, my symbols got messed up, but the other class told me yours look like angles. Yeah. Okay, good. So this first piece of given information is telling us angle ABC is congruent to angle FEG. So what you want to do is you want to first identify which angle we're talking about. So angle ABC. Follow the points, trace them, it makes an angle. Do we agree ABC is that really big angle here? Yes. So you go inside the angle. You're going to go inside the angle, and for angles, we mark we draw loops to show congruency. So a little like half loop. And now I'm going to put the same identical tick mark or marking on the other angle that it's congruent to. So it says angle FEG. Well, do we agree angle FEG is the big angle on top of the triangle? Yeah. So now I'm going to put the same mark I did but now for angle FEG. And that shows us that those two angles are congruent. So the next given is that segment FH is congruent to segment HG. So we mark angles congruent with loops. We mark angles congruent with loops. And we mark segments congruent with slashes. So if I want to mark that segment FH, I'm going to put one slash, is congruent to segment HG, I'm going to put one slash. Again, this should be an angle symbol.
Now we want to mark angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD. So let's follow it. A to B to D. Isn't that this top angle in here? And then it's congruent to angle CBD, which is this bottom angle. Now we mark angles with loops, but I can't just put one loop here. I can't just put one loop, because if I put one loop, what does that mean? It's equal, to, it's equal to these other two parts, and it's not. So we're going to put a loop, and then a slash through it. You got it, Oscar. We're going to put a loop, and then a slash through it. Yes? Can we put a double loop? You can do a double loop. Oh. You could put a loop with a slash, or you could do a double loop. I'm, I'm more, I prefer the loop with the slash just because, like, once you start getting to a lot of things, it gets complicated, but absolutely you can do a double loop. Now, be very careful where you position the next loop. So I don't want it connecting. I don't want it connecting to the top one because then it looks like one big loop altogether. So I'm gonna stagger it, either put it higher or put it lower. So I'll put it higher here, right up here. So they're not connecting. Does that make sense, what I just said? No? Yes? Okay. Now, what do you think I should do for segment EF congruent to segment EG? Simon? Double tick marks. Double slash. You got it. So for segment EF, I'm going to put two slashes. For segment EG, I'm going to put two slashes. So, because it's showing different parts are congruent, so the one slash shows that only these two segments are congruent. So, for this, when we do two slashes, it shows EF and EG are congruent. If they all had one slash, that means all four would be congruent. So, we have to make them different. All right, let's do number one. Now, these are angle symbols. The mo I keep saying this, I keep saying this, and then you guys will get to the quiz and still forget and not know how to solve the problem. The most important thing you do for every problem is read your given information and label it. Translate it all into your diagram. So I want you to do that now. I want you to go through your given information and mark it all in your diagram. I'm going to be coming around and looking over your shoulder. Don't be scared. I don't buy I'm just looking to see that to make sure you know how to label things properly. I might give you a little piece of advice. these two into your diagram also. So angle DF is x squared minus x, so you write that there. Yeah. You got it. And then the other angle, yep. Yeah. And now you make your equation. Okay. Okay. I also, even though you did everything perfect, um, I still want to see that you're putting the expressions into the diagram also. So x squared minus 6 here and 5x there. All right, I'm seeing some really good things. Let's go through this. So here we have angle DEF, that's this angle up here, is congruent to angle FEG, which is this angle over here. 
I also want you to label the expressions into the diagram also. So when it says angle DEF is X squared minus 6, I want that in the diagram. X squared minus 6. And FEG is 5X, I want that in your diagram. Now we want to find angle DEG. In order to find angle DEG, I need to solve for X. Well, didn't we just mark that these two angles are congruent? Yeah. Yeah, so shouldn't these two expressions be equal to each other? So we're going to say x squared minus 6 is equal to 5x. How many people were able to get that far? Good. All right. We're going to have to factor. We're going to have to factor. In order to factor, what number does it have to equal? Michael? Zero. I need to move that 5x over. When I move that 5x over, where do I put it in reference to the x squared and the negative 6? Bam. You go x squared, you, you do x squared minus 5x minus 6. You got it. It has to go in the middle. That x has to go in the middle. So it's x squared minus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. Now we factor. Who thinks they know how to factor this? What numbers did you use? Uh, max. Uh, negative 3 and negative 2. So close. So let's check this out. What's a negative 3 times a negative 2? Uh, you need a positive. Wait, you need, you need to get a negative 6. You got it, yeah. So what is it? But you, are, you also need to get a negative 5 and negative 2. Yeah, so 3 and 2 won't work. We need different factors. You want to try again, Max? Mm -hmm. Well, 5 times 1 is 5, but you're getting closer. What yeah. multiplies to 6? Oh, yeah. So, 1 and? 1 and 5. No, we're multiplying to 6. Oh, wait, 1 and 6. 1 and 6, you got it. So, which one should be negative? You want the 1 to be positive and 6. Excellent. Perfect. So then we're negative 6 plus 1 is a negative 5. So we're x minus 6, we're x plus 1, and now our answers are not negative 6 and 1 because what do I have to do now? Equal Set them both equal to 0 and solve. So x will equal 6, x will equal negative 1. Are you allowed to have a negative x? Yes, you are allowed to have a negative x. What are you not allowed to have? When you plug in, Julia? Uh, a negative measurement. Excellent. When you plug in, you're not allowed to have a negative me measurement. If I take that negative 1 and I plug it in 5 times negative 1, isn't that negative 5? Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to have that? No. No. So I'm rejecting the negative 1 for that reason. Sometimes you'll have two answers, and that's okay. I'm rejecting that one. So now let's plug in for 6. 5 times 6 is 30. Shouldn't these two angles be the same? Because yeah. they're congruent. So that means the top angle is also 30. So what is angle DEG? 60. 60, you got it. Maya? So you plug in one, get your answer, box it. Plug in the other one, get your answer, box it. So you just box two answers. Do them separate. Yeah, you'll have two different final degree answers. We plugged in 6 for x. So we did, um, like here, 5 times 6. That's how we got 30. And then we did 6 squared minus 6, which is 36 minus 6, which is another 30. And they should be the same because they're congruent. What's wrong? I went too fast. No, I understand. But you can never substitute in the negative. You can. you can. So when you substitute in the negative, so we did that first. So we did 5 times negative 1. That was negative 5. So you can't have an angle that's negative. But if it came out to be positive, then we would keep it. And we just have two sets of answers. All right, we're going to skip number 2. 
and we're going on to number three. Now, out of everything we've done so far, the clock problems will probably um, be the most frustrating to you. There will be one clock problem on the test. Um, there will be, um, you know, the system of equations like that homework assignment we did, number 21, where we had to set up a system of equations. We'll do another one in section 1.3. Um, there will be a system of equations. So I'm telling you a lot of things right now and from the beginning of class that you should already know a lot of the problems that you should anticipate to be seeing. All right, so let's do this clock problem, 2 o'clock. Let's set up our clock. They're doing solar panels on the roof. That's what we're hearing. Yeah. It's only a minor inconvenience. <laughs> Oops. I wrote six instead of nine. All right. So at two o'clock, the big hand is on what number and the small hand is on what number? The big hand is the minute hand, the small hand is the hour hand. Two o'clock, Michael. Good, big hand is on the 12, the small hour hand is on the two. So the direction said, find the angle formed by the hands of the clock at each time always look for the angle that's less than 180 degrees. So do we all agree we're trying to find this angle in here? Yes. Is there another angle? Um, yeah. yeah. Isn't there this angle on the outside there? Clearly this is going to be more than 180 degrees, right? So we're finding the inside angle. We're trying to find the inside angle. Now, the clock is in the shape of a circle. Who remembers how many degrees a circle is all together? Uh, Alexios? You got it, 360 degrees. Now we took that 360 degrees and didn't we split it into 12 sections? So we're gonna do 360 divided by 12, which is 30 degrees. What does that mean? That means between every two numbers is 30 degrees. So at 2 o'clock, how many of these 30s are incorporated into the angle? Oscar? Two. Two. So at 2 o'clock, the angle is how many degrees? 60 degrees. And that's our answer there. All right, let's go on to letter B. So now things are going to get a little bit more complicated because now we're not going to be on exact numbers. Do we still agree between every two numbers is 30 degrees? Yeah. yeah. Okay, at 4.15, the big hand, the minute hand, is on exactly which number? The three, very good. And do we agree at 4.15, we're somewhere between the four and the five? 
still closer to the four, but between the four and the five. Yes, the hour hand is somewhere between the four and the five. All right, so now let's figure out where exactly that's going to be. So this is where I'm going to throw you for a loop. So just try to stay with me. If you follow this process every time, it will always work. So at 4.15, we're 15 minutes, right? We've, been, we've covered 15 minutes out of how many? 60. So you're going to create a fraction minutes over 60. So in this specific problem, we are 15 over 60. And guess what I'm going to ask you to do? Simplify it down. So that will go down to? three-fourths. You got it. No, not three-fourths. One-fourth. One I'm sorry. I just said yes, and I misheard. One-fourth. All right. So what does this one-fourth represent? This now is going to be different for every problem. The denominator, which will be a different number for every problem, but represent the same thing, is going to represent number of spaces. The numerator is going to represent tick hand is on. Just write it down and then I'll explain it to you. Do we agree at 4.15 we're somewhere between the 4 and the 5? So this denominator represents the number of spaces. So that means I have to create 4 spaces between 4 and 5. The way I'm going to create 4 spaces between 4 and 5 is by drawing 3 more slashes. By drawing 3 more slashes. 1, 2, 3. By me drawing three slashes, I've now created four spaces between four and five. It's not always going to be four spaces. It's in whatever number's in that denominator. And now I'm going to draw the hand now, the hour hand. The hand is going to be on the first tick that I drew, the first tick that I drew. And now we need to find this angle. So we know there's definitely one 30 degree in there, but now there's not a whole nother 30 degree. This 30 degree has been split into four sections. Do we agree? So how I figure out how many degrees are between each section is I'm going to do 30 divided by One. 4. 30 divided by 4. Which is going to be 7.5. So that means this is 7.5, this is 7.5, this is 7.5, this is 7.5. No? Did I do something? Yes? The minute hand is on the three. The hour hand is somewhere between the four and the five. Right? The, the big hand is the minute hand. The small hand is the hour hand. Okay. All right, how many 7.5s are in there? There's four. Well, no, in the, in the angle. Oh, in the angle, there's only one. There's only one. So what is my total angle? It's going to be... 37.5 degrees. You'll get better. Let's do another one. All right, let's set up our clock. What time is it going to be? 5.50, do you agree we're between the 5 and the 6? 
So I'm going to I'm going to really exaggerate this to leave more space between the 5 and the 6 just so I have room to do my work. And between every two numbers is how many degrees? 30. The 30 interval will always be the same every time because we're 360 the, for the whole circle and then splitting it into 12 sections. All right. Now at 550, the big hand, the minute hand, is on exactly which number? 10. The 10. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on here. There we go. All right, so the big hand is on exactly the 10. All right, and the minute hand is somewhere, I'm sorry, the hour hand, the small hand, is somewhere between the 5 and the 6. How am I going to figure out where between the 5 and the 6? What am I going to do? Ms. Maya? The minutes over 60. What's our minutes here? 50. 50 over 60 reduces to 5, 6. Now, who remembers what does the denominator represent? Max. Um, number of spaces. Spaces, number of spaces between the two numbers. And what does five represent? Mm, the parts. Yep. Tick hand is on. All right, so now I need to create six spaces between five and six. I need to create six spaces between five and six. If I'm going to create six spaces, how many additional slashes do I need to make? Not six. Five. Five, exactly. I need to make five slashes. One, two, three, four, five. Now between all of these slashes, how am I going to figure out how many degrees are between all of the slashes? 30 divided by what? 30 divided by 6. You got it. So the whole, from 5 to 6, isn't that 30 degrees? So now that 30 degrees has been split into 6 sections. So we're going to do 30 divided by 6, however number, many sections it's been split into. What are you doing, Alexios? You've been up, touching something on his computer like every 2 seconds. What are you doing? Sorry. I don't know. All right, so we're going to do 30 divided by 6, and that's going to be 5. So that means it's 5 degrees between the slash. Oh, I'm writing 50. 5 degrees between the slashes. All right, and now the hand is going on which slash? The fifth one. One, two, three, four, five. This one right here. Now we want the angle that's less than 180 degrees. Which angle is less than 180 degrees? The yellow or the blue? Which angle is less than 180 degrees? The yellow or the blue? Julia? The yellow. The yellow is less than 180 degrees. So we're looking from here to here. That's the angle we're looking at. 30. 60, 90, 120. How many fives are included here? One. 125. Not five. Not five fives. Because we want the angle less than 180 degrees. Sam, what's your question? Oh, you're going to answer it? Is the minute hand always going to be like on like a perfect hour? Yes. Yes. Um, so when we're drawing these diagrams on like the test request tomorrow, 
I'm going to give you, oh, no, I'm not going to give you the diagram. Or maybe I will. I don't remember. Okay. Do we have to draw out, like, every no. single phrase? Like, you're, you're just doing this? I'm just doing it to show you. You just need to draw what you need to solve the problem. Okay. All right. So that is the end of section 1.2. Now, this homework is not going to be assigned to you. It is optional. Um, and you don't submit it. I don't need to see if you did it or not. I'm going to post the answer key to this homework in case you want to just do extra problems. That's really the only purpose of this. Your only job is to study. That's your only job is to study. Yes, Michael. Monday. Quiz 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. All right, so this is the end.